the teachings of Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher, Dean of Students at Diaspora Yeshiva on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Now the article says, why is this night different? But we know that, uh, actually this is a Mishnah Masech Tepsachim. Did you know that, Golda? Ma nishtana halayla hazeh mikol haleilot. This is a Mishnah in Tractate Pesachim. What page? What daf? I don't remember what daf, but it's an Arve Pesachim. It's in the Mishnah, the chapter is called Arve Pesachim. It's the last chapter in Tractate Pesachim. And this is actually a Mishnah. Ma nishtana halayla hazeh mikol haleilot. But the mission doesn't say lama, doesn't say madua, it says ma. What does ma mean in Hebrew? What? So why does the article say why is this night different? Why would be lama madua? The mission doesn't say why, it says ma. It says what is the difference? What is the difference between this night and other nights, okay? So that's a question to ask Maxwell House Haggadah and also Art Scroll. Right? Why? It's not why, it's what. I'll give you another, what is different between this night and all other nights? This is the only night that we say Hallel at night. Usually you can't ask the same kashas every year, people get bored. This is the only night where you say Hallel. You don't say Hallel on any other night. Not Sukkot night, not Shavuot night, not Yom Kippur night. Why do you say Hallel? Why is it night different when you say Hallel? You don't do that on any other night. Because we were supposed to go out and... So what? Well, why do you say Hallel for? So to answer this question, we will ask what? another question. See, already you have more than four questions. The word Haggadah comes from the word Higaratov. Higaratov Abincha. The word Haggadah comes from Higaratov Abincha, you shall tell over to your children. And the Chinuch says, if you don't have any children there, it's a mitzvah to tell over to everybody, even yourself. So the Gadot of Bincha Bayoim Ahu. The Haggadah should be read when? Bayom. So David, why didn't we read the Haggadah at night? I'm all mixed up. Because Shabbat starts at night. But it says the Gadot of Bincha Bayom. You should tell over the story. The Haggadah should be said when, Shushan? Bayom. So why did we read the Haggadah at night? You hear the question on the table? So one answer, one question answers the other question. The Kabbalah teaches us that the night of Pesach, you light up my life. The night of Pesach is such a holy light, a holy night, where we can turn, by telling over the story of the Exodus, we turn the night into day. You hear? We light up the night by telling over the story on Pesach night, we turn physical night into yom. We got it all bincha by yom, even though physically it's not day, it's night. But the story of the Exodus on Pesach night makes the light of the Shekhinah shine through us, turning the physical night, Avi, into what? Day. Virtual day. So therefore, the, the Torah says you should read the Megillah, not the Megillah, the Haggadah, by yom. It's really physically night, but it's virtual day. And therefore you say halal at night, proving that even though physically it's night, we turned it into what? Day. day. A make-believe day. We got it to the bincha. Just like Hashem, we hmm? don't see him, but by, right. by, by Pesach, we do see him. The or Shekhinah. Right. The light of the shina lights up the darkness as it would be a what? A virtual day. And therefore it says, read the, the Haggadah Bayom even though we eat at night, and therefore we say halal at night because the night is a virtual day. That's one explanation of why we say halal at night. So Yehuda Lev, he quoted the great Rav Salavechik without even knowing it. He says, you know why you say halal at night on Pesach night? Mechavim, the great Rav Salavechik, that halal on Pesach night is unique. It's part of Sipur Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. By reading Hallel on Pesach night, you know why you do it? Because there's a mitzvah to tell the story of the Exodus when? At night. Hallel on Pesach night is part and parcel of Sipo Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. Did we go out? Yeah. No, we left during the day. We left during the day. 
But to, to, to tell over the story is at night. So the Halel on Pesach night is unique. It's part of the Sipur Yetzias Mitzrayim. That's why you sing Betzeis Yisrael in Mitzrayim. And therefore you say Halal at night, only on Pesach, because the Mitzvah to tell over the Exodus of Egypt is when? Pesach night. And Halal on Pesach night is part and parcel of what? Of the Haggadah. That's another reason why you say it when? At night. And therefore the Gemara and Psochim calls Halal Halal Mitzri. You hear this, Maddie? The Gemara of Sachem calls Halel Halel Mitzri. Why is it called Halel HaMitzri? Why call the Halel after the Egyptians? Because the Halel is part of the, the Yitzhak Mitzrayim story. Okay? So this answers the question why we say Halel at night, which we don't do on any other, any other night. Why is this night different? What is different? This Shabbos is called Shabbos HaGadol, yes? But we didn't leave until the next day. High noon we left, right? We were all our days begin the night before. But the Pasuk says, read the Haggadah Bayom. And you read it at night. So the Kabbalah teaches that we turn night into what? Make believe day. But anyway, this Shabbos is called Shabbos Haggadol. Why is it called a big Shabbos? Because the rabbi gives a big speech, right? Yes. yes. That why? <laughs> so I'm going to give you an answer that's not, not so well known. Everybody knows the pat answer. A great miracle happened. Well, I'll give you an answer that is not well known. Man ishtana Pesach mikola chagim. It's the only chag that's called HaShabbat. In Parshish Emor, the Torah says, Usratam lechem mimochwat HaShabbat. Begin counting the sphere at the Omer from the next day of Shabbat. Which is the next day of Shabbat? The day after Pesach. The day after Pesach. And yet the Torah calls Pesach what? A Shabbat. With the Hei Ediyah. It's the only Chag called a Shabbat. So you might think if that's the case, perhaps Pesach has the same Kiddusha as, a, as the weekly Shabbos. Because it's the only Chag where the Torah calls what? HaShabbat. So maybe Eliezer, if that's the case, maybe Yom Tev Pesach has the same Kiddusha as what? As weekly Shabbos. So therefore, the Shabbos before the Chag that's called HaShabbos is called HaGadol. That even though Pesach is also called Shabbat, it's still not as great as what? As the weekly Shabbat. This is my Kiddush, take it or leave it. Okay? So therefore, the Shabbos before, the only Chag that's called HaShabbos, Pesach, the only Chag that's called Shabbos. So you might think it's as great as the real Shabbos. So therefore, the Shabbos before, the weekly Shabbos before the Chag that's called Shabbos is called what? HaGodol. That even though Pesach is also called Shabbos, it's still not as great, Shushan, as what? As the real McCoy, the weekly Shabbos, okay? Now the question is, man ishtana Pesach, why is Pesach the only Chag that's called Shabbat? There ain't no other Chag that's called Shabbat, only Pesach. I'm glad you asked. That's another man ishtana. You can't ask the same questions every year, people get bored. So Moral says something amazing. It's like amazing Gemara Shabbos, page 119, that anybody who makes Kiddush on Friday night and knows what he's saying, all of his sins are forgiven. Better than Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, you have to fast to get kapara. Friday night, Malka, you're having a matzah ball soup and chopped liver. And what else? And simis, you're still getting kapara. Only if you said Kiddush. Only if you said Kiddush or you heard Kiddush and you know what the Kiddush is all about. So it's not hocus pocus. Morale explains when you make Kiddush on Friday night, you're testifying. We are, the J witnesses are false. We are. The real Adat Yisrael, aid. We are called Adat Yisrael. What's Adat mean? Witness. Witness, aid. That's what we are. When we make Kiddush on Friday night, says the morale, we're testifying for Kiddush Baruch Hu that he created the world. The problem is, Avi Ezra, that Arasha Apostoliedus. Someone that's, that's a sinner, his testimony cannot be what? Accepted. Right? And we know God follows his own Torah. Magid Devor of the Yaakov, Chukav Mishpat of Yisrael. We say in Tillam every morning, hallelujah, right? You know that God follows his own laws. So we testify for him that he created the world, but if we are a shayim, our testimony is what? Not valid. So God has to forgive us. If we know what we're saying in Kiddush, 
all of our sins are forgiven because we're testifying for the big boss that he created the world. But if we are Rishoyim, our testimony is not valid, Daniel. So therefore, God has to forgive us. So that's why you make Kiddush Friday night, his sins are forgiven. Says the morale, therefore, Pesach is called Shabbat. Because when you make Kiddush on Pesach, you're also testifying. Not that God created the world, that you do what? Every Friday night. But on Pesach night, Shushan, when you make Kiddush, what are you testifying for? That God created the Jewish people. <coughs> you hear this? That God created our Jewish people. We were created on Pesach night. Just like God created the world, that's Friday night, we testify. On Pesach night, we testify that God created us as a nation. So again, that's why Pesach is called Shabbos. Because the same uh, kapara that Shabbos gives, Pesach gives, Pesach gives, if we're concentrating by the Kiddush, and this year it's a double header. Fr Friday night is Pesach night. So you're testifying for two ideas. Two for Aviezer. You're testifying that God created the world, like every Friday night. And you're also testifying that God, what? Created the nation of Israel as a nation, and therefore you get a double kapara. And therefore Pesach is the only Chag that's what? that's called Shabbat, and it has the same koach of kapara as Shabbos has. So we testifying that God gave birth to us? God gave birth to us, so created us, birthday. that's birthday. right. Oh, Chava hit a home run. Therefore, why is Nisan called Aviv in the Torah? Nisan is called Aviv in the Torah. Father. Aviv. So the Zohar says, Av Yud Bet. On Nisan, God became the father of the 12 tribes. Yiddish? Yep. Chava. Until Nisan, God was the creator of the universe. On Nisan, we gave God another title, Aviezer. The Papa, the Papa. Daniel, God became the proud Papa. When? Pesach night. Therefore, Aviv. Av Yud Bet, Bini Bechor Yisrael, Mazel Tov. So we testify to that when you make Kiddush, Avraham, on Pesach night. And therefore, the Yom is called Shabbos because it gives you the same what? Kapara that Shabbos gives you. It's meant to express gratitude as well. Oh, gratitude as well, but more than that, acknowledging that God gave birth to us, Kaviyachal, as what? Bene Bukhari Yisrael. Yes. God says, My child, my firstborn is Israel. We're not only his child, Avi Ezra, we're well, what? Firstborn. firstborn. Bene Bukhari Yisrael. And that happened when? Yehuda. Pesach night. And therefore, Pesach is the only Chag that's called what? Shabbat. But today is your birthday. Da 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 da. Right? Love right? The is the uh-huh. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Now why did God we had to do Golos? God said, I'll enslave your people. God told Abraham, right? We'll be enslaved in a land not our own. God never said Mitzrayim. Could have been another nation. Why did we have to be in Mitzrayim? The most corrupt and the most immoral nation on the face of the earth at that time was what? Mitzrayim. So why dafke there? There's a posuk in Shir Hashirim, Keshoshana Bein Achochim. Like a rose among what? The thorns. What does that mean? If everybody was a rose, there'd be no difference. Ralph Savetik explained this. You ever go to 47th Street, the diamond exchange? All diamond jewelry, Maddie, is explained against a, a black background. Why is a diamond always displayed against a black background? What? Because what? We all shine. The sparkle, when you contrast it, in order for God's diamond to shine, which is us, he had to put us against the blackest background you can find. And that is what? The trying. There we shine. We have to experience the contrast between who we are and who they are to appreciate, as Hanok said, to appreciate that we are part of God's holy people. That we are part of God's holy people. That we are God's diamond, God's firstborn. 
Ani ladodi vidodi li. We read the Shir Ashirim on Seder night. What does Ani ladodi vidodi li mean? I am always praising my lover, and my lover is what? On Pesach night, Hanoch was right, we express gratitude that God tied his destiny to me and you. Isn't that amazing, Michael? The creator of the universe on Pesach night tied his destiny to our destiny. Isn't that something? Isn't that worth saying, Hallel? Who loves you, baby? God says, I can't make it without you. God says, we need each other. Benjamin, can you have a papa without a son? Can you have a son without a papa? Can you? Well, not really. Right? So God says, Beni Bechorbi Yisrael, my firstborn child is Israel. You are my firstborn. Now that concept took place when on uh, Pesach night, and therefore we say Hallel. We light up the night and we turn it into what? Day. Virtual day. You light up my life. You give me hope. How to get that in? The light of the Shekhinah. They got everything from us, Yehuda. Now in the Haggadah, we quote a verse in Ezekiel. God, said, God tells the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 16, in the part of the Agoda, God said, I made you thrive like the plants of the field. Why does God compare us to a plants of the field? Why? Why are we compared to Ezekiel 16, part of the Agoda? God says, you are like my plants. You know, talk to your plants, what? A plant... A seed before it sprouts, what happens? It rots in the ground. It rots and decays. And only then you get a lovely plant. God says, yes, you are like my plant. You have to go in Memtesh Shari Tuma in order to out to sprout into a lovely plant. That's the way it is. Before a, a seed sprouts, first you plant it in the ground, and what happens to it? It rots. And then you have lovely wheat or lovely plant. So we had to be planted in Memtesh Shari Tuma. Shushan, it's called Yerida Lotzara Chaliyah. First you have to what? Go down. Like the seed in the ground. Down, down, down in order to what? Rise again. Whatever is true in the physical world, Chanoch, is certainly true in the spiritual world. If in the physical world you have to plant the seed deep in the ground and it has to rot and decay before you have a lovely what? Plant or lovely wheat or any crop, that's true in the physical world, Chav, it's certainly true in the spiritual world. That, that's why we have to go down into Memtesh Shari Tuma in order to what? To rise and grow. And that's why God compares us to a plant as part of the, uh, of the Haggadah reading on, um, on Pesach night. Now, the Mishnah says, the world was created by Asura Mamorot, 10 sayings. God gave us 10 commandments. How many Svirot are there? 10, it's all, the morale says it's all connected. The 10 sayings that God used to create the world, the 10 commandments, and the 10 plagues are all what? They're all connected. They're all connected. Now, the Bnei Yisoscha, my great-great-grandpappy, says something amazing. Remember he said that God created the world, but on Pesach night he created the Jewish people. Which was greater? You would ask me, I'd say creating the universe with the zillions of the galaxies, right? You never heard of Jew. What? Bnei Yisoscha says, when God created us on Pesach night, it's even greater. Please hear this. The Mishnah says God created the universe with ten sayings. How did God create the Jewish people? The ten plagues. God didn't have to bring ten plagues on Mitzrayim. God could have whacked them in one shot. But the Bnei Sosra explains, and the Oral also, that if the Jewish people would not have witnessed the ten plagues, 
we would not have been able to what? Receive the Ten Commandments. Each plague that the Mitzvah got whacked raised our God consciousness one level. So if we would not have witnessed the ten plagues, we would not be capable of receiving what? Ten the Ten Commandments. So to create the world, God used ten positive statements. To create the Jewish people, God had to destroy Egypt to build us. Which Kaviyoch is more difficult for him because who's Kulay Toiv? What does the word God mean? Good. He's all goodness. But to create the Jewish people, God Kaviyoch went against his own nature. What's his own nature? Kulay Toiv. And here he went to destroy a nation. Because if you would not have destroyed Egypt in ten plagues, we would not be able to be created as a people. Keneget HaTeva. God says, Yotze or Uboreira, Yesh Meayin. For him, it was something Kaviochel Keneget HaTeva, and therefore creating the nation of Israel through the ten plagues of Egypt, says, Bene Soschor, my great grandpappy, was a greater feat for God than creating the world. Jewish people were created through witnessing the Esra Makot, like the ten sayings that God created the world, the ten makis, God created Am Yisrael, enabled us to receive what? The, uh, the ten commandments, the ten commandments, otherwise we would not be able to receive the ten commandments. Now, in the Dayenu, we make a strange, a strange statement. Dai, Dayenu. If God would have brought us to Har Sinai and not given us the Torah, Dayenu. You understand this? I don't. <laughs> What's going on over here? God tells. Dayenu, uh, die. If you would have brought us to Har Sinai and not given us the Torah, Dayenu. What does Dayenu mean? Enough. 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 I don't get it. The whole purpose of the Exodus, Hanok, was what? To give, to give us the Torah. So why bring us to Har Sinai and not give us the Torah? Why would that be Dayenu? Doesn't seem to make any sense. Aviezra, I'm mixed up over here. Why is that a Dayenu for? Because gratitude is progressive, it keeps on increasing. But that's enough? Just give us, bring us the mouth and not give us the Torah? It doesn't say it's complete. It says Dayenu. He took us out of Egypt, out of slavery, out but of... But he tells Holy Moses by the burning bush, when you take the people out of Egypt, you'll bring them back to this mount. Where was the burning bush? On Har Sinai. They're going to get the Torah. So why do we say if we would have brought us to Har Sinai and not given us the Torah, why is that Dayenu? Why is that Dayenu? It's a pretty so Rashi says something amazing. He says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael. Ke'isha Echad Belev Echad. When we got to Har Sinai, it says Vayichan. You know Hebrew, Daniel. There were millions of people there. It should have said Vayachno. Hakman says Vayichan. Ke'isha Echad Belev Echad. He encamped there. By when we got to Har Sinai, it says Israel, he encamped there. What do you mean he? Should it be they camped there? They were like one people. So Rashi says, Ke'isha Echad Belev Echad. And never again did we unite like that. So Rashi said, for that alone, for that alone, even though we wouldn't got the Torah, just that the Jewish people are united, for that it would have been enough. How much God treasures Avi unity. Unity. And that took place only in Harsina. Something about the magic mountain, magic mountain, that we became what? United, for that alone it would have been enough. Magic moment. Magic moment, right? Another explanation of why just bringing us to Har Sinai and not giving us the Torah, why would that have been what? Dayenu. Now, the Gemara in Shabbos says, we got the Torah on the seventh day of Sivan. Check your calendar, Lily, and when do you celebrate Shavuos? Six. Sixth of Sivan. Is there a typo there uh, somewhere? If the Gemara decides that the Torah was given when? On the 7th of S Sivan. Why do we celebrate? 
Vav Sivan. The Morgan Avram says the Tzorech Iyun, Rabbi Abramson. The Morgan Avram, the Tzorech Iyun. What does that mean? I don't know. The calendar made a mistake. We should celebrate. Why did we celebrate a day early? We got the Torah in the seventh of Sivan, yet we celebrate the day early. Why is that? Rasavechik has a beautiful idea about this. Remember that song by Peggy Lee? Is that all there is? Is that all there is? Beryl, you remember that song by Peggy Lee? Is that all there is? I forgot that song. She said, well, she was a little girl. She was so excited that father is taking it to the circus. <gasps> the circus, she had such great expectations. Three ring circus. Then when the father took her to the circus and on the way out, she said, is that all there is? Is that all there is? You're planning a vacation to Disneyland. The great expectation. You're planning a cruise. Benjamin, you're planning a cruise. The great expectation. But when it happens, the expectation is always greater than what? The reality. The reality. So we have you remember, you go to a wedding, Sarah, they say there's a great Viennese table coming. A great Viennese table coming. Your mouth is watering. But when the Viennese table comes, it's not as great, David, as what? Anticipation. So we have 3,000 years of anticipation. Says the great Vasilevich. We celebrate. When was the height? God said, I'm going to give you the Torah. When? On 7th of Sivan. When were we most excited? When was the expectation the height? The day before. Because it's human nature that when the event happens, it's never as great as the anticipation. So when were we most excited? I'm so excited. When? The day before, the 6th of Sivan. So therefore, God said we're going to celebrate that day. The day when you were what? The most anticipated and excited. And therefore, Shavuos is the day before. And therefore, if God would have brought us to Har Sinai and not given us the Torah, it would have been enough because we were so excited. We were so turned on. Rasavechik says, the quest for Kedusha, that's the goal of life. They're looking forward to the anticipation. Once you've arrived, King Solomon, he had it all. He was the greatest. Once he hit the top, what happened? There's no place to go, but what? Yeah. Down. So when do we experience awe then? Awe? awe. The quest for Kedusha. Always looking forward to it. Once you've arrived, there's nothing to what? Anticipate. To anticipate. Look at King Solomon. The Jews reached the height of Nasa Venishma. The height of Kedush, what happened after that, Chava? The golden calf. So therefore, we celebrate a day before. And you brought us to Har Sinai and not given us the Torah. It would have been already what? Enough. Is that all there is? Remember that great song? It's so true. Right? You're looking forward to Disneyland vacation. You're excited. When it comes, you know, and all kinds of problems. All problems develop, right? It's not what I thought. But that's it's not a trivial world, not necessarily. Whatever is true, oh, Hanoch, hit a home run. Whatever is true in the physical world is certainly, David, true. Right. The spiritual world. It's certainly true, because we know the physical world is only what? A reflection of what? The spiritual, spiritual world. world. That's the way it's in the physical world. It's certainly true in the spiritual world. Once you hit the top, there's no place to go but down. <clears throat> so you always have to be what? You have to have a future goal. You finish Shas, that's it. Starting over, right? Go to Yishalmi. You finish Bavli. If you grow complacent, that was the problem. How could the Jewish people, 40 years after the Exodus, 
They got the Torah, God spoke to them face to face. They got the Mon, the Be'er Shal Miriam. Forty years later, they went wild with the wild Moabite women. How could that be? Chava. Forty years after the Exodus, all the miracles and all the Kedusha says, Vayeshev Yisrael Bashitim. What does the word Vayeshev mean? They grew complacent. They settled. They settled, that's it. I can retire now. I'll rest on my laurels. And the greater a person is spiritually, once he grows complacent, watch out. It's a slippery slope. And the bigger you are, because the Jews were so great, they fell so hard. They reached the mountaintop, Vayeshev Yisrael Bashitim. It's time to relax. In the spiritual world, you can never relax. If you're not moving up, you're moving down. Therefore, Yaakov was shown a ladder in his dream. Yaakov is us. A ladder. If you're not climbing up, Yehuda, nobody takes a coffee break on a ladder. So you gotta be very careful. The greater you are spiritually, you have to continue to steig. How do you say steig? Onwards and upwards. Otherwise, it's a slippery slope. Downhill fast. That's why the Jews, 40 years after the Exodus, after getting the Torah, they committed such a terrible sin with the wild Moabite women. Hard for us to, uh, to understand that, right? Now, Manishtana, Alayla Zed, Mikola, Alayla. There's so many Manishtanas over here. The Mishnah says, we quote Rabbi Gamliel, whoever doesn't explain Pesach, Matz, and Morer, didn't do anything. Manishtana, the Mitzvah, the Sitna Sukkah. Mitzvah, to talk about it? No. The Mitzvah, to blow a shoifer. Sheikh Alulav. Mr. talk about it? No. Manishtana Pesach Matzamora. Even if you ate Pesach Matzamora, but you didn't explain it, it's like you ate quinoa. I ate Pesach Matzamora, right? Quinoa is not kidneys, by the way, right? I don't think it's kidneys. Beryl, Manishtana. Shaifa, just blow it. You have to talk about it. Uh, Lulif, shake, shake, shake. No, no mixture to talk about it. Manishtana Pesach, even though you did the mitzvah. If you didn't explain it, it's like you ate quinoa. That's a good Manishtana for you. So we know that there's a 13 principles of, of faith in the Jewish religion, right? It's hard to remember all 13. But Yosef Albo, in the Sefer Ikkab did us a favor, Yehuda, he took the 13 and he compressed it into what? Three. If you know the, thir if you know the three, Buy three, get 13. Jews love bargains, barrel. Buy three, get 13. The Rambam's Yid Gimel Ikram of Yahadut, to be a loyal Jew, 13 principles of faith, Chanoch. You know all 13 by heart? I don't, but I know the three by heart. So Yosef Alba in the year 1414 tells us, you know the three? Elisheva, you got the 13. What are the three? One and only, Akurish Baruch Hu. Always was and is and will be, one and only. The second, Torah and Hashemayim. The rabbis didn't make it up, Torah and Hashemayim. And the third, Schar Onish, reward and punishment. If you check the 13 barrel, you see uh, each one of the 13 fits neatly into what? Uh, three. Says the morale, Pesach Matzen Moror is the big three. On Pesach night, when God created us and gave birth to us, he says, take a pledge of allegiance to me that you are my holy people. Pesach Matz and Moror is i.e. what? The big three. I'll prove it to you. What's the first Iker of Yahadut? The one and only God. Why did God tell us to take a lamb and not a turkey? I mean a goat, a lamb, not a turkey. Turkey has less cholesterol. So the Ramam tells us, look in Ezekiel 20, the Jewish people were addicted to the lamb worship, the zodiac of the lamb. Ezekiel 20 says we were addicted to lamb worship. So by taking a lamb and degrading it and slaughtering it and burning it and eating it, it showed our total rejection of our Avodazara and accepting the one God. That's why it was a lamb and not a taiki. Who are you calling a taiki? Hmm? We worship the lamb. Ezekiel 20 says we, yeah. 
Jews are always into, you know, that was the latest fashion, the Zodiac. Like today, you walk around with torn jeans. You know, it's a fashion. The more tears the jean has, the more they charge you. Not a joke. Right? That's, a, that's the answer, right? Meshigas, right? So by shechting, degrading, and burning, and eating the, the object of Rav Odezara, says Rambam, we demonstrated the rejection of Rav Odezara and, and accepting one. That's the first principle. Yeah. What's the second principle? Torah and Hashemayim. If I believed the rabbis made up the Torah, would I pay 180 shekels a kilo for matzah? <laughs> Michael, 180 shekels a kilo of matzah. <laughs> and all the horavanya and all the sponja. Why go crazy? The rabbis made it up, Maddie. Matzah, the expense of all the toil of getting rid of the chametz proves beyond a doubt that what? It's from God. From God. Otherwise, I wouldn't knock myself out and pay so much. They want to charge 25 shekels of matzah on air of Pesach. 25 shekels of matzah. That's what they. It's not even chocolate covered. So matzah and all the toil of getting rid of the chametz proves beyond and beyond the doubt that what. Torah min Hashemayim. Torah min Hashemayim. The rabbis made it up. I wouldn't knock myself out to spend so much. What's the third ikra of Yahadus? Schav Onish. How do you say that in English? Moror. All bitterness in life is not haphazard. All bitterness in life is part of reward and punishment. So Pesach, Matz, and Moror, i.e., the big three principles. On the night we became God's holy people, he says, take the pledge of allegiance to me, which is Pesach, Matz, and Moror. The belief in one and only God, rejection of Avodah Zarah, Tarmin HaShemayim, Matzah, and Moror, that all bitterness in life is not random, it's all part of the scheme. How do you say reward and punishment in English? Reward and punishment. It's all part of that scheme, right? That all, all of life has to contain this world. This world is like that. This world, Pesach, Matz, and Moro. Pesach, Matz, and Moro, right? Matz is, uh, is a symbol that... that it's the staple of life, staple. Yes. Bread and the matzah is right. bread that's not left. But in all life, there has to be, never, there has to be more, right? Torah is a staple and so is uh, right. matzah. Right. No, that all of life consists of that. The, in Pesach, matzah, and moro. That's what it is. Mm. We quote in the Haggadah, Shira Chadasha. We're going to say Shira Chadasha. Why is that Lashon Nekeva? In the Haggadah we say to God, Shira Chadasha. Not Shir Chadash. Why Shira Chadasha? Why in the feminine? Because the whole miracle of the Exodus only happened because of you righteous ladies. So therefore, it's not Shir Chadash. In the masculine, it's what? Shira Chadasha. The Schus Noshim Tzikonios. And also the future redemption will also be what? Schus Noshim Tzikonios. And therefore, Shira Chadasha in the Nekeva, in the feminine, and not Shir Chadash in the masculine. That's pretty incredible. Hmm? Ralph Tovechik points out something amazing. We said uh, earlier, as Rabbi Yehuda Lev quoted, that why you say halal at night, Ralph Tovechik says that halal is really the Rabbanan. It's one of the seven rabbinic mitzvahs, Chava. One of the seven rabbinic mitzvahs is to say halal when? On Yom Tov. But Ralph Tovechik says that saying the halal on Pesach night is what? A doraita. Because it's part of Sipo Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Yehuda, you're the home run, Yehuda. Yesterday you told me on the trip, right? That's different. Hallel normally is the Rabbanan. One second, I'm bidding say Hallel. But to say Hallel on Pesach night is part of Sipo Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And that is not the Rabbanan. 
So Halal and Pesach night is a daraita, part of the Exodus story. And therefore the Gemara of Sochem calls Halal, Halal HaMitzri. That's pretty amazing. So he said Pesach Matzah, Hillel would make a sandwich. Pesach Matzah and Moror. Hillel invented the wrap. So you see, Hillel was a Sephardi, because you can't make a wrap with Ashkenazi Matzah, David. It crumbles. Hillel was a Sephardi. He took the soft matzah, like the Yemenites and Sephardim do, and he ate Pesach Matzah and Moror together. Pes Why did he eat it together? That's life. Life is all mixed together, Aviezer. Life is like a cup of coffee. You have hot water and you have cold milk. The coffee is bitter, but you have sweet sugar. And it's all what? It's all mixed together. Life is a cup of coffee. Pesach, matzah, and moror. What does Pesach, a matzah, symbolize? Cherut, freedom. But moral symbolizes what? Bitterness and suffering. It's beryl. It's all mixed together. Hillel would eat it all together. Life is Pesach, Matz, and Moror. Biyachad. You can't have one without the other. That's life. Riding high in April. Shot down in May. That's Pesach, Matz, and Moror. You got to take the good with the bad. Because it comes from the same source. Moror, all bitterness in life, it's part of what? Schar va'onesh, reward and punishment. That's incredible. Pashas Mitzayra usually comes out around uh, Pesach time. This week's Parsha, the Torah says, I'll send a neg on your house. Rashi said, it's Besura Tova, it's a good tiding. What's a good tiding? A good tiding? I thought a neg comes because you speak Lush and Haram. Rashi said it's a good tiding. Because the Canaanim, they would bury their treasure where? In the house. In the house. And the Jews were coming, the walls of their house. And the Jews were coming, they said, not going to get my money, it's all buried deep in the walls of my house. Then the Canaanim, they got expelled or got killed out. And the Jews would never find the treasure. You get a neg on your house, you have to demolish the house and what? Bonanza. Bonanza. I don't get it. If God wants me to find a treasure, couldn't I win the Irish sweepstake? No. New York State Lotto? Anything will do. Why go through the anguish and the agony and the busha of having a nega in my house, Asia busha Kherpa? And the anguish and the financial loss of destroying the house to find the buried treasure. And I thought a nega comes, Michael, because of what? Noshin hara. So why is it a good tiding? So the Kabbalah teaches that the word nega, nun gimel ayin, which means what? Plague and bitterness. Rearrange the word nega. What do you get? Oneg. Same letters. That all suffering in life contains a hidden oneg. Person spoke Loshan Hara. He deserves to be punished. The agony, the anguish, the agmas nefesh of having a neg on his house, destroy the house. But once he gets that anguish and he gets that busha, that's the tshuva. Then he gets what? A payoff, an oneg. That all bitterness in life contains a hidden payoff. If you don't find the buried treasure here, you'll find it what? In Oilam Haba. For doing tshuva, right? The tshuva, the anguish itself is the tshuva. The agony in the busha. Tshuva of the oishi is busha. The shame a person goes to having to destroy his house. Everybody knows, shame on you. You spoke Lush and Hara. Therefore, you have to demolish your house. That busha. That cherpa, that's his tshuva. Now he deserves what? A payoff. The nega becomes an oneg. All moror contains a hidden good. Yes, Michael. 
Right. We paid our dues. You may, you may give up hope. No so for the people not to give the Jewish nation not to give up hope. No that's why he showed them where the treasure of the Egyptians was. That's right. But Michael raised an interesting point. God told Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom. He put up a fight. How could you do that? Should the judge of all the earth not do justice? Sounds like the devil. Khalil How can you do that? God said, I'll enslave your people for 400 years, Benjamin. What did Abraham say? Nothing. Nothing. Hello, Abraham. Take a pill and lie down. God wants to destroy Sodom. I can't let you do it. How dare you do that? Shall the judge of all the earth destroy innocent babies in Sodom? You can't do it. When God said, I'll enslave your, your people, your descendants, what should Abraham say? Don't, Don't do it. He didn't say anything. Who asked why, Kanye? I'm glad you asked why. Why? I'm glad you asked. Yes, it's why? Because it's his... Ki avodai heim. Ki libin Yisrael avodim. The purpose of the Jewish people is God says, you are supposed to be my servants, my slaves. Ki libin Yisrael avodim, avodai heim. The highest title a human being can reach is what? Evet Hashem. What's written on, on, on Moshe Rabbeinu's tombstone? Evet Hashem. Chief Rabbi, Doctor, PhD, DHL. <laughs> Doctor of Hebrew letters, DHL. Evet Hashem. The highest title a human being can reach. Evet Hashem. That's the highest. How do you learn to be an Evet? You got to go to Evet school. <laughs> What's the Yale University of Evet school? Cairo. Cairo. You got to go basic training. How do you become an Evet Hashem barrel? You got to go to the Yale University of, of Evet school. So therefore Abraham couldn't complain. You had a basic training. How to be an Evet Hashem? You got to learn what it means to be an Evet. And that you learn in the school of hard knocks in the slime pits of Egypt. Once you've learned it, now God says you're ready to what? Graduate. That's what Therefore, Abraham couldn't complain. Oh, Benjamin. They break you down to build you up. That's the goal. That's the highest title. So we had to go to Egypt to learn how to be an Evet. And then we graduated. So Abraham had nothing to complain about. Now we say, Arba Miyodeya. Arba Miyodeya. We say to Arba, who knows two, who knows four? I know four. Who are the four? four. The four mothers. Right? I know four. The four mothers. Bila, there were four mothers? Weren't they six mothers? Without Bill and Zilpah, there's no Don Naftali God Bosher. Why do we speak Arba Miyadeya? I know there's four mothers. So Rivka Rochon Leia. But without Bila, without you, Bill, huh? And without Zilpah, there's no Don, there's no Naftali, there's no God Bosher. But they were incorporated into Lachrona. Well, without them, there's no... Why are they dismissed? That's a powerful... They're not counted as a mother of Israel. Why not? Without them, Maddie, there's no shifte ka. And if one is missing, they're all missing. If one stone was missing from the breastplate, Yehuda, puzzle. So without Bill and Zilpah, four tribes are missing. Why are they not counted as the mothers of Israel? To be a founding mother of Israel, it's more than physical DNA. There's also spiritual DNA. 
Sar Rivka and Rochel and Leah, <clears throat> all of them went through terrible trials and tribulations, each one of them. Sara kidnapped once by, what's his name? Pharaoh, and once by Abu Mamzer, the king of the PLO. And how many years was she barren? And all the aggravations she had from Hagar, and wanderer, under wanderer, wandering. And Rivka, how many years was she barren? And all the Torah she had from Asa. And Rochel and Leah, Rochel was barren. And Leah cried her eyes out because she thought that Yaakov wouldn't want her. To be a mother in Israel, it's more than physical DNA. You have to go through Nisiyonot, trials and tribulations to instill into us to remain loyal Jews despite, despite the hardships and the persecutions and the galut and the holocaust and the terrorism. How come we're still Jews and we're still loyal and we're still here? Because we have it in our DNA. So Rivka, Roch and Leah, they, what's the word, transferred into us, instilled in us that despite all of the tzorot and all of the hardships, when the going gets tough, Aviezer, the tough go shopping. No, the tough get going. Bill and Zilpa, they led lives of tranquility. No tsarists, they were not kidnapped, no wandering, they weren't barren. Everything clicked. Kanoch, no pain, no gain. That's the shortest mishten and shas. <laughs> Buddy, you're waiting for a bus? Not joking. Lafum Tsara Agra. It's not a Pepsi commercial. It's the shortest Mishten Shas. No pain, no gain. According to the pain is the gain. It's Dafka, the mothers who suffered and were able to instill in us the, uh, the patience to remain loyal to God despite the suffering, to realize it's only trials and tribulations. They're the mothers. Bill and Zilpa. They gave birth to us physically, but they didn't have any life of hardship and trials and tribulations. They had lives of tranquility. And therefore, they had no spiritual DNA to pass on to us. So they're not counted. What does DNA stand for? Divine, Divine natural ability. That you only get from whom? Sora, Rivka, Rochel, and Leah. Bila Zilpa, no pain, no gain. Even though without them, there is not, there is no shift they call, even without them, right? <laughs> so Zechel and Migdash Kehillel. So do those, Hill, yes? So do those tribes, where they come from, lack certain things also? Don ben God Vosher, Don ben Without Don, you ain't got Samson. What I'm saying to you is that no, we, all have have we all have Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. We all have the four imam. So oh. the other tribes also have them as the four imam. Also, all, every Jew. Of course. Every they Jew. also lack also. Who have done what? Totally God bless you. What do they lack? No, what do they no they also have the DNA. That, that's no, why, that's from the mother. But the father, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov gave them. Yaakov was the father of all twelve. But they couldn't get it from their mothers. So Don and Aftoli, God bless you, they only got it from Yaakov. So are they lacking anything? No. no. They're not lacking because their father Yaakov gave them. Father Jacob. In fact, the Talmud says the prettiest women in Israel came from Shevet Usher. Miss Israel. All Miss Israel came from Usher. It says all of the other tribes lined up to get a date with Miss Usher. Rashi and Chumash brings it down right here. For them, it came from the From the other tribes, it came what? Through the mothers. But for Don of Tolly God of Usher, it came to Papa Yaakov. The Papa, the Papa. Okay. So is there, it comes out to be the same. Comes out to be the same. But therefore, Bill and Zilpa are not considered the spiritual matriarchs, the spiritual matriarchs, right? Even though they were the physical matriarchs, but for us it's more than physical, Beryl. It's a spiritual. The Zayar calls Yaakov's wives Neshei Barzel. 
the Iron Ladies, before Maggie Thatcher, Neshe Barzel. The Zohar calls Yaakov's wives Barzel. What does Barzel stand for? Bilha, Bilha. Rachel, Rachel. Zilpa, and Leah. Who says that? The Zohar. The Yaakov's wives are called Neshe Barzel. The Iron Ladies, before Maggie Thatcher. Barzel, Iron. Bilha, Bilha. Rochel, Zilpa and Leah. No, but what does Zohar mean by that? Do they have some they, they have the fortitude, right? That even though Bill and Zilpa didn't give us spiritual DNA, without their physical DNA, we yeah, wouldn't be here. But they chose, and, and they, uh, they... Bill and they Zilpa. ...converted, and they chose to be... Uh, the wives of uh, Jewish. Well, they chose. Rashi says that after Bila, Rashi says that after Rocha and Leah died, uh, Yaakov elevated their status from concubine to full wife. Well, they were just concubines. They were concubines. When Rocha and Leah died, Rashi says Yaakov elevated their status to full wives. <laughs> Not in the lifetime of Rocha and Leah, because it would be what? Not respectful. Not respectful. Sunday at 2 o'clock, we have the Wonder Women of the Exodus. For more of Rabbi Sprecher's teachings, visit rabbisprecher.com.